Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. What is death? When the heart stops beating, the second the brain ceases to function, the end of the will to live, or is it the privilege of human nature and life, without it, not worth our taking? Whatever your definition, religious, clinical, psychological, or poetic, no one is a total answer. Nor do we expect to answer it here, only to tell the story of one individual death. I don't know how you put up with Elaine all these years, Arch. Oh, I guess, Dan, I never knew how to go about getting rid of her. Well, too bad you didn't ask me in the old days when I had connections. I could have had her taken out for you just like that. Hey, what are you saying? I... I didn't mean get rid of her like that. Why not? She's put you through the mill for years. Take, take, take. Me? I'd have killed her long ago. Our mystery drama, The Thousand and First Door, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was John Webster, a famous playwright of Shakespeare's time, who said, Death hath a thousand several doors for men to take their exits. Art Hollis, pharmacist, opened one as unexpected as it was strange. This is his story. All right. Come on, boys. Let's move it on the double. Uh, here, I'll get the doors. All right. Well, what have you got here, Dr. Pinnock? I don't know, Garvey, but he sure needs the best nurse in the hospital and intensive care. Now, when I picked him up at his house, he was a goner. He was more of it. But on the way back in the ambulance, I got his heart going again. Now, can you get him on a support system? All right. Now, roll him in. We'll do what we can, Doctor. <sighs> Why, he sure picked a lousy time to have a stroke. Oh, is that what it is? Uh, let a guess. He's in deep coma. All right, boys. Now you can get him into bed. <coughs> there we go. <laughs> have you got a name for uh, him? Yes, a whole dossier. Arthur Hollis, male, right. Caucasian, 48, married, uh, one child, wife, Elaine, hysterical, you know, history of arteriosclerosis, mm -hmm. uh, one coronary. Right. Okay, boys, just leave him on his back. I, I want to have a listen. Hey, quick. Get me a hypo for adrenaline and rush that equipment, nurse. His heart has stopped again. We're going to have to get him to an oxygen tank. Yes, doctor. Now, you draw some blood so we can get him tight. Uh, he may need some whole blood. Can do, doctor. No, no, no. Don't move. I'll take it from the other arm. His respiration is shallow as hell. All right, how's his pulse? Rapid, thready, indistinct. I don't like it. Now, as soon as I draw this blood, there we go. I rush it to the lab. Mm -hmm. Now, let's keep our fingers crossed. He's not a rare type. Uh, I bet there must be massive brain damage. Heaven knows how long he was moribund before I arrived. When I walked in, I thought Mr. Art Hollis was a goner. You never saw anyone look deader. Art Hollis? It's me they're talking about. Dead? I don't feel dead. I... Ah, I can't move. I can't feel anything. Or see. My lips won't move. Dead? Am I dead? Is this the end? Oh, Elaine. Elaine. 
mind should be here. Where did it all go? How did it all go? But I remember back how lovely it was in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. Yes, miss? Can I help you? Oh, uh, I, um, well, I, I was looking for the druggist, uh, Mr. Hollis. <laughs> You're looking at him. Oh, well, the one I mean is, uh, well, an older man. Oh, you mean my father. Uh-huh. Well, this is his day off. I'm, uh, kind of minding the store. Oh, well, um, see, I, I was looking for something, uh, for, uh, what, um, you know, a, a headache, you know. Oh, uh... You don't have a prescription? You mean just like a plain aspirin? Well, not not exactly. See, it's, uh... Oh, uh, you mean, uh... Oh, j just a moment. Uh, something like, uh, this? Yes, yes, that's just what I want. <laughs> Should have been, uh, smarter right away. <laughs> uh, anything else? Well, let's see, I... You don't have much else but medical kind of things, do you? Uh, that's my father for you. He's kind of old-fashioned in some ways. He thinks a drugstore should be just that, just for drugs, a real pharmacy. <laughs> well, that's pretty old-fashioned. I mean, in 1954. Well... <laughs> you know how some old folks are. Oh, oh don't I just. Why, they sure want to run your lives, don't they? They sure do. Uh... You live at home? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till I move out. Oh? You getting married or something? Oh, no. Nothing like that. Now, me and another girl at the office have been talking about getting a place for ourselves. You know. You live home? Yeah. The old man, uh... Well, he's not feeling so good these days. I couldn't walk out on him or the store here. I mean, it's just me and him. Oh, your mother died? Yeah, before the war. Well, how about you? Oh, my parents are still alive. Were you in the service? Yep. Mm. I had two brothers killed. What outfit were you with? Oh, medics. See, I was uh, going into pre-med when Korea started up. Kind of blew a crimp in my plans. I was going to be a doctor. But didn't you still want to be after you got out? Well, more than anything in my life. Well, then why didn't you? Well, Pop was sick, and there was the place here, so I... Uh, Settled for being a pharmacist. Well, that's still kind of a doctor. Oh, sure. Say, yeah? uh... Well, you know my name. I was wondering if... Oh, well, mine's Elaine. Elaine Stack. I live right in the neighborhood. So do I. In back of the store. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no. Over it, actually. <laughs> Hey, uh, listen. Yes? Uh, being we're so close and all, how about... <laughs> oh, darn. Uh, I was gonna say, maybe we could, uh, date sometime? Oh, super. I, uh, don't have your address. Oh, will you take care of your customer? I'll just write it down. Oh, sure. Uh, use one of my prescription pads. Oh, he here's a pen. Uh, your phone number, too, huh? Of course. <laughs> I was 25 years old, but from the moment I saw her, I could feel my heart beating right in my throat. She was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen, and the nicest, you know, shy, but not too shy, and she looked you right in the eye. And most of all, did she like to have fun. We sure enjoyed a good time. I'll see you later, <laughs> You're the most. So are you, Elaine. Well, you sure lay out the weather. Oh, just love to break it up, party boy. Wee. in my eyes ever since I met you. Oh, you say the cutest things. Well, honest, the darndest things. Oh, I love you, Elaine. Oh, Artie. I thought you'd never say it. Oh, boy. Oh, girl. Let's do that again. Mm. Oh. Now you're 
Cream, you just have to marry me. Just try and stop me. Oh, <laughs> I was only kidding. <laughs> well, I wasn't. That's uh, why I took you out on the water, little <laughs> fish, to get you hooked. Hooked. Which one of us was it that really got hooked? Oh, I didn't have any doubts then. I couldn't wait till the wedding day. But the stumbling block of all was my own father. I mean, he really knocked me for a loop with a roadblock he wanted to put in our way. He said, it's not, not that, that I've, I've got, got anything against this, this girl in particular. It's just any girl. Why, Pop? Why? I'm 25. And this is your last chance. Art, I want you to be a doctor. It's too late. Just the point. It isn't. Pop, it means pre-med, medical school, internship. It'd be six or seven years before I could think of getting married. If she loves you, she'll wait. It's what you wanted all your life. What do you think it did to me when I got sick and you had to give it up? I shouldn't have let you. Well, what could you do? We couldn't afford any more than we did. You... You had to have someone at the store. Why? Well, because it's more than you can handle. I'm going to sell it, Art. And then I won't have to handle it. And you're going to take the money and go be a doctor. Oh, great. Fine. And, and what do you live on in the meantime? I won't need to. Let's not kid around, Art. We both know I'm going to die. And soon. No. Oh, no. yes. So I am going to sell the store. Oh, no, you're not. We are all going to need the store to make a living because there'll be three mouths to feed when I marry Elaine. Pop never sold the store because he died three days later. And three months later, I married Elaine. After the honeymoon, Elaine decided not to go back to work. Oh, that was fine with me. I I had another job in mind for her. That's when I first began to discover that Elaine had another side. A side I never dreamed existed. What's the matter, honey? Oh, nothing. You're, you're not eating a thing, aren't you hungry? Sure, I'm hungry. Look at this crummy restaurant. Oh, you should have stayed home. Oh, I couldn't have faced cooking another dinner. I'm tired of the kitchen and all the smells. Makes me want to retch. Hey, how are you feeling in the mornings? Well, how do you expect me to feel when you drag me out of bed at the crack of dawn to make breakfast? Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I should have realized it. <laughs> I'll get my own from now on. Gee, it, it, it's finally happened. What are you going on about, Art? Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you're feeling queasy about food and all that. Hey, uh, you have been to the doctor yet? Oh, what do I need a doctor? Art, you back at that again. I told you and told you I don't want any kids. I'm only 22. I want to keep my figure. Funny thing is, she didn't know it, but she was already carrying Tom. When she found out, well, she was fit to be tied. Well, he came on time, healthy as a horse and pretty near as big. She blamed me for that and, and all the rest of it. He's the only kid we ever had. Maybe just as well. Elaine wasn't much of a mother. And that is the kindest way to put it. What? Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> That's just what he's doing. Hey there, lover boy. Now, why don't you have to go and pick him up for... I didn't want old leather lungs here to wake you up. Besides, it was time for his bottle. I get the message. Then I'll give it to him. I've got it right here. Look, as long as you're going to feed him, why don't you take him back to his room so somebody can get some sleep around here? Okay, darling. I was too blindly in love, of course, to see Elaine. It would be a long, long time before my eyes were opened. Before I'd understand what a terrible mistake I'd made. 
except there was Tom. That was the good part of it. My son. Strange that he was the one who held us together through the years, and that in the end it should be because of him that I was ready to murder my wife. <laughs> The systems which science has developed today to support life are myriad and marvelous. Any organ, even a brain, might be kept alive and functioning by artificial means. But the mystery of death is still elusive. Who is to say that after the brain scan has pronounced that gray mass no longer alive, that some portion of the memory may still not function? Bringing us the rest of its story when I return shortly with Act Two. The man lies flat on the hospital bed. The machines to which he is hooked, breathing for him. He is in an oxygen tent. He is being fed intravenously by the slow drip of glucose in one arm, his blood nourished by plasma in the other. There are other tubes, too. To various to mention, and most important, the insulated wire that leads from him to the plug in the wall. That is his lifeline. If life can be said to exist. I can feel nothing. Hear nothing. See nothing. Yet, I can remember who I am. That my name is Art Hollis. And I remember how I came to be here. Elaine. Oh, Elaine, whatever became of the girl I loved, fresh, young, slim, and shy. How can I recognize her after six years of marriage? I come home for lunch and the breakfast dishes are still dirty in the sink. She sits reading a fan magazine. Is lunch ready? Oh, is it that late? Oh, honey, I forgot. I get to reading and time slips away. Fix yourself a sandwich, huh? Well, what have you been doing all morning? You're not dressed? You haven't washed the dishes? Did... Uh, Elaine, where's Tom? Well, didn't you fetch him from school? Oh, take it easy. I didn't have to. Well, you're not letting a first grader walk home alone. No, he's with Jose over at the Ramirez's for lunch. Well, that's the third time this week. Oh, well, Dolores has so many kids, she doesn't even notice another uh, one. I asked you not to let him go over there anymore. What's the matter, Art? They're not good enough for you? No, it's nothing to do with that, and you know it. He and Jose are amigos. So fine. Let Jose come over here and have lunch. The Ramirez's are on welfare, Elaine. They can't afford extra mouths to feed. Just because you're too lazy to... I'm sorry. You better be. You want to know the truth? I wasn't feeling so hot this morning. Well, if you'd stop loading yourself up on chocolates and cake and sweets and all the junk you eat, you'd feel better. You know, you're starting to put on weight, Elaine. So what? A woman looks better for a few curves. Anyway, it's mostly because I never get out. You never take me anywheres anymore. Well, Dad gone, there's only me and Dan, the part-time help to run the store. I have to be there to handle prescriptions. Well, hire another pharmacist. Well, the way business is, I can't afford it. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. You got a savings account. I saw the book. That money can't be touched. Why not? You can't take it with you. I am saving that money for Tom's college and his med school. Aren't you a little, uh, previous? The kid is only six years old. No. Two generations of Hollis's blew it, but not the third. By the time Tom is ready, the money's got to be there. Oh, boy. I'm going crazy locked up in this apartment. Elaine, uh, look, maybe if you wanted to go back to work again, I you... I don't expect to work anymore. I'm a married woman. Well, if you help out in the store and I could save on the part-time... What if... for? Blow it all on babysitters? Where are you going? Down to the store. What about your lunch? I'll pick up a coffee, Ann, at the Caliza's diner. Give my regards to Dan and ask him why he never stops by anymore. <laughs> I 
unsteady employee and about my only friend. I think he made book on the side of the numbers. I couldn't figure out any other reason for him to stick around. Couldn't pay that much. When Tom was about eight, he came into the store one evening dressed to kill. And... Hey, Art. How's it moving? Oh, uh, slow, Dan, slow. I thought you might have closed up. About three quarters of an hour still to go. Brought you some java. Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> look, I, I'm, uh, I'm blowing town for a while. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah mm -hmm. Trouble? Yeah, no other way. I'm, uh, I'm getting my own territory. Now, I do a good job. I keep my nose clean. I'll be back here in the big time and really in the chips. Look, uh... Dan, I, I like you. I consider myself a friend. Uh, now maybe I kind of blinked at what you were up to, but uh, hey, don't don't get mixed up with the hard guys any deeper, huh? Art, <laughs> you let me fly my kite, huh? Now look, you'll need a new boy. Now I could send you a good guy. No, to... no, no. I don't want any more of that in my store. I'll I'll find my own man. Oh, I'd right, wake up. Now, either who you get runs it, or they cross the street and give Jackman a business. Now, he'd jump at it. Well, let him. I don't go for that kind of stuff. I never should have let you get away with it, but uh, we were... <laughs> <laughs> Buddies, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I'll miss you. Me too. Hey, you uh, got time to drop up and say so long to Elaine? She talks about you all the time. Uh, yeah. All right. All right, I want to say something. Well, go ahead, anything. Do yourself a favor. Get rid of her. She's an anchor around your neck. She's going to end up destroying you. I'm sorry you said that, Dan. Uh, let's drop it right there, okay? Because that's my wife you're talking about. My wife. I stick with her because... Because she was the boy's mother. People grow used to one another anyway, so all those years went rolling by. And Dan was right. The book and the numbers moved across the street, and Jackman's flourished, and only the prescription business kept me alive. Then Elaine got hypertension. She was in and out of the hospital, and the bills ate into the nest egg. Till finally, Tom was getting to the last year of college, and there was no money for medical school. And everything blew up when I had the heart attack. Hi, Dad. Hm. Oh, uh, hello, Tom. Did I wake you? No, I was just lying here with my eyes closed, thinking, oh, what are you doing down here from college? Come on, Pop. I wanted to see you. Oh, but not like this. Anyway, you shouldn't be away from your studies. Somebody's got to mind the store. I uh, hired a pharmacist till you're back on your feet. Well, then you don't have to be here. I want you back where you belong. No way. I'm forgetting college, Pop. Forgetting college? Now, don't blow a fuse. There's no point in my going back. I can't go on to medical school anyway, the way things are. Well, what do you mean, the way things are? Oh, please, don't get excited. It's no big deal. There's no dough, so what? I'm not all that sure that I'd, I'd have made such a hot saw bones anyway. Tom, you can't do this to me. You can't do this to yourself. Pop, I'm only doing what has to be done. It'll work out. No, Tom. Look. All my life, I dreamed this for you. Dr. Thomas Hollis. I know, Pop. I know. We'll work it out. I'll... I'll borrow money somewhere. Where? Mother told me you're in hock up to your neck already. I'll sell the store. Like your father wanted to do for you. You know that makes no sense. I've been lying here thinking. I, I could go to Luther Stack yeah. and... My grandfather? Mother's father? Over my dead body. That old fat fraud and his frumpy wife have had the nerve to look down on you ever since my mother married beneath her. The way they see it, 
I wouldn't touch a penny of it. He wouldn't lend it to you anyway. He wouldn't even give you the time of day. He gave us something better. One month later, he gave his life. Along with his wife in a plane crash. He was insured to the hilt, and Elaine was his sole heir. By that time, I'd gotten out of the hospital and was starting back to work. I'd persuaded Tom to go back to college to finish the term. Elaine had hysterics. By the time she pulled herself together, it was near the end of the term, and I had to have a talk with her. All I'm asking is that you do something to guarantee a loan. Well, what you're asking me to do is guarantee a loan. Yes. Have you any idea what it would cost to make that boy a doctor? Yes, uh, about $20,000. And you want that from me? I just want you to guarantee... Well, how could I guarantee a loan you couldn't pay? Oh, damn it, Elaine. He's, he's your son, too. Tom's young and he's strong enough to take care of himself. I'm a sick woman. I gotta think of myself. You had your nest egg all these years. Well, now I'm gonna have mine. I might remind you. My nest egg, which was for our son, mostly went out the window to pay for your doctors. That's right. Throw it up to me. Can I help it if I'm not a well woman? Well, if you'd lay off the rich food and the booze and the pills you don't need... The doctors had to prescribe the tranquilizers. I'm not talking about those... I mean, the ones that you hook out of the dispensary when my back is turned. So, now I'm a thief. Oh, I don't know why I didn't get rid of you when I had my chance. I can't tell you how many times I've asked myself the same question. A few days later, Dan turned up out of the blue. Well, five bucks is the best I can do, Dan. Uh, and that's only for old times' sake. Well... Yeah. Uh, it's better than a kick in the pants. Thanks, Hart. You're, uh, not on the lamb. No, no. I just blew it. That, well, that other thing's along the line. Say, look, uh, my helper's leaving. You want to come back here? <laughs> Can't pay much, but, uh... Oh, Hart, old buddy, pay something, and it looks like a mint the way things have been for me. Well, I'll tell you what... At least till you get set and Tom's still up at college, you could have his room. Yeah? Huh? I'm going to take you up on that, Art. You better be sure. Sure? <laughs> hey, listen, just having a friend around again is going to save my life. Dan moved in. And it was something to have a friend around again. I guess it got to me and... Night when Elaine was out to the flicks with some girlfriend, over a glass of beer, all the pressure suddenly blew out. And I guess I kind of cried on Dan's shoulder. I've seen it for myself, Art. I don't know how you put up with her all these years. Oh, I guess I just never knew how to go about getting rid of her. Well, too bad you didn't ask me in the old days when I had the connections. I could have had her taken out for you. Easy as that. Hey. Hey, what are you saying? No, nothing, pal, nothing. Just just what you ought to be thinking. She's put you through the mill for years. Take, take, take. Oh, well, I'd have had her killed a long time ago. <laughs> Don't think it hasn't crossed my mind at times. And why didn't you do it? What? You must be kidding. No, no, I'm not. You got every drug you need to do it and to know how to use them. With her gone, you get the money and everything. It, it, it's great. Now, if it was me, I wouldn't hold back for one minute. Art Hollis gazes at his friend Dan Fenton in horror. A man talking as casually of murder as if it were an ordinary business deal. In Dan's world, maybe. But that isn't why Art is so horrified. What has shaken him is to realize that he is actually considering the proposal and wondering if he could get away with it. I shall return shortly with Act Three. 
The taking of one human being's life by another, under any code or philosophy, is not to be condoned. But are there extenuating circumstances, as in war, for example, or in self-defense, or in the heat of passion, Perhaps each individual must judge for himself, but cold-bloodedly, with premeditation, the method of the poisoner. Surely, there is no excuse for that. I don't pretend to take any side. You've heard Art Hollis's story up to now. Are there any extenuating circumstances as he plans to murder his wife, Elaine? Stop putting me on, will you, Dan? I am not putting you on. Now, I'd knock her off for you if I knew how to get away with it. Oh, thanks a lot, pal, but drop it, fat, lazy, penny-pinching dame. I know what she's put you through all these years. Selling out her own son, I mean, when she's rolling in it. What'd you say that insurance was written for? Top figure. 300000 apiece. Oh, holy mackerel. And Elaine was a soul heir? That's right. Boy, you know how I'd do it if I was you? Do what? Get rid of her. Look, she's got these big black and brown capsules. That, uh, what, what, do you, what do you call them? Oh, they're tranquilizers. Yeah, uh, right. And she swallows uh, one or two of them every night before going to bed, huh? Yeah. And she also told me she takes a sleeping pill. It's another big gelatin capsule, right? That's right. Yeah, well, I take a bunch of capsules just like them, and I load them with whatever would do the job. Eh? Then I put the same amount of each of them in two bottles just like she has and switch them one night before bedtime. Now, after she swallowed the pills you fixed and they knocked her out. Then I'd switch back to the original bottles, flush the rest of the poison pills down, and put the bottles back in the dispensary. I'd go out for the evening with a pal, you know, like me. we tie one on, and late that night, after we sure it was all over, we'd come back and we'd find her. Together. Kaput. Too bad. Uh-huh. And what would you put in these capsules? That's what you figure out, old buddy. Plus the fact you got access to the drugs. Could you get away with it? I mean, what about the autopsy? If you waited long enough, it'd be pretty well dispersed through the tissues. With a history of hypertension like hers, or, say, coronary disease like me, death wouldn't be too surprising. Like you say, Art, in your case, it might look suspicious because you don't pop pills. But in her case... Is par for the course? No, in my case, with my hardening of the arteries, most any doc would write me off as a stroke or maybe congestive heart failure. Of course, there wouldn't be any motive for killing you. I mean, what would anyone have to gain? Yeah, that's the truth. But the way you laid it out, I... I don't see much risk for me killing her. You know what? I bet you could get away with it. It's one thing to talk about a thing like that. Most people wouldn't even get that far, but... Even with all the provocation, all the lousy years, the dirt, the way she treated Tom, the the hysterics... Still, I wouldn't have done anything about it. If it hadn't been for the way I found Elaine, when I came home that night. Hi, Elaine. I'm home. Oh, did you have to wake me up to tell me? Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, light was on. Oh, I must have fell asleep. Well, I won't be long. I am so tired, I... Hey. Uh, what are all those? What? The bags there. Oh, that's my new luggage. Oh? You going on a trip or something? Yeah, to Mexico. When? Day after tomorrow. You never told me. I just made up my mind. Look, Elaine, if if you can afford a trip and, and luggage and all, uh, won't you reconsider about Tom? No. Don't come crawling around with your hand out. 
I told you, he's of age. Let him stand on his own two feet. You're talking about your son. Well, I never asked for him. I never wanted no kids. You take him. He's your son. He don't like me anyway. Uh, what chance did you ever give him? I'm not going to argue. I just want to get to sleep. What are you going to Mexico for? To get rid of you. Huh? I'm going to get you off my back. The way I should have done years ago. I'm going to get me a divorce. What for? I got me a fella. A real live one. You've got to be kidding. You'll find out this Saturday when I'm gone. Now... You go to sleep on the couch till I get out of your life for good. Something snapped in me right then. And I thought, all right, if that's how you want it, only you won't have to wait till Saturday. I'll arrange it for you before that. The following night, I had my chance. Elaine went off late in the afternoon for a permanent, uh, a Wednesday. All the shops in our neighborhood took the afternoon off on Wednesday. I closed early, too, about five o'clock. And Dan and me went up to get things ready. Oh, just the way we planned it. Only, what happened? What went wrong? I remember... I was with Dan in the apartment, and we were having a drink. You switch bottles okay? Uh, yes. Got the others? Uh, in my pocket. So, here. I'll drink up. Oh, uh, what is it? It's ouzo. It's Greek. Strong. Just what you need. Well, I'll drink it up. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> hey, that is strong. <laughs> Funny taste. Yeah, well, I get the rest of it down. You get used to it. Here, I'll drink with you. Over the river. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, wow. <laughs> that makes me a, a little woozy. <laughs> Look, I'll take care of you. Now, we're supposed to be out on the town for the night anyway, so sit down and I'll take care of you. That Dan, I... Uh, uh, hey, hey, hey. Don't back out now. Oh, yeah, you know, that, that stuff's pretty good. It um, calms me down. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Okay. I'll pour some more from the bottle. Uh, Dan. Yeah? Um, I don't... I don't think I can go through with it. Oh, uh, sure you can. All right, now she ain't got it. What well, you think of Tom, huh? Anyway, it's as good as done now. Here drink. You know, just just knowing that Tom is going to make it, that we're finally going to have a doctor in the family, makes makes it all uh, worthwhile. I wouldn't mind dying this moment. The last thing I remember is sitting in that chair and feeling sleepy. So sleepy. And now where am I? I can't move, but somewhere I thought I heard people saying, he's dead. Dead? How could I be dead? It, it isn't supposed to be me. It's supposed to be... I won't die. I won't die until I... Wait. Wait. I hear voices. Voices. Listen. Try to listen. I'm afraid you won't get any reaction from your father, Mr. Hollis. I'm prepared. Could we, uh... Be alone together. Just a minute. Well, don't touch anything. No, I won't. I won't. Very well. Oh, you know your mother and another gentleman are on the way up. I'll let them in when I leave. I'd like a moment alone. I understand. I'll leave you now. I don't know what happened.
happened, Pop. I hope nothing I said upset you. I mean, I was... I'm... I'm going to come back to you to tell you that I got a government loan and come hell or high water, I'm going through med school and I'll come out a doctor. And I'll be a good one. For you and for Grandpa. I just wish I'd said all this in time. I talked to the doctors. I know there's too much brain dam damage for... I wish I had the guts to pull out the plug so you could die right. But that would be no way for a guy who planned to be a doctor to start out. I love you, Pop. Goodbye. If you want to go in, Mother, there's no way you can hurt him now. Uh, Tom, I... I'm sorry, Mr. Fenton, I don't feel like talking. What we have to come in here for, Dan? It gives me the creeps. Molly, I've got to keep up appearances, all right. Yeah, I guess. He looks dead enough, don't he? Uh, well, he isn't. Until he's legally dead, you're still married to him. And that means that you and I can't get married. But what's your hurry? Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? I don't know. I'm a big girl now. Maybe I don't have to get married. Hey... You want me to walk out on you? That's all you want, isn't it? That's all you ever wanted. The money. It wasn't me, like you said. You keep your voice down. Ken, you're hurting me. I don't like to hurt someone stuck in a legal bind like this. I don't understand what happened. I thought he told you the stuff couldn't fail. Yeah, sure he did. He swore half the dose he made for you would kill him. And I gave him twice as much. I switched four of your pills for ones that he made up. I even gave him a Mickey and the Uzu to make sure. How long is it going to take for him to die? Oh, he could be dead in a minute just by yanking that plug out. Go ahead. Well, you go ahead. We don't dare risk it. The cops have an eye on you already. On me? I got a big fat notion old Art is lying there laughing his head off at us. That he knows he's got us stuck. But good. It's going to be a long wait for the both of us. I should have known. Elaine always went for Dan, and Dan, he'd do anything for money. Real cute guy, conning me into mixing my own murder potion. Only for some reason, it didn't work. I'm here and peaceful, and I can rest a long, long rest to make up for 20 bad years, while Elaine and Dan claw themselves to pieces longing for what they each want so bad and can't have. Yes, sir. I think I'll just lie back and relax, and hope that God will take me in his own. to death. One more to add to Mr. John Webster's 1,000 several ways. A doorway leading to a long, dark road with no signpost to mark the end. A man lies moribund and still, kept alive by the miracles of modern science, not ready yet for the final embrace of death as God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. I shall return shortly. You may remember the case. It was featured in many newspapers because it was over two years before Art Hollis's heart stumbled and at last failed. As for Elaine and Dan, they were arrested and finally convicted. Our cast included Russell Horton, Carol Titel, Earl Hammond, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown, Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division.
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search box.